you're gonna win the game. I guarantee. Is this fun or what? This is what you left all that boy. Take the popcorn risk. Here we go. <laughs> They call this the city of brotherly love, but it's really a banana republic, communist country. Look at the clock, Mr. Official Four. Stop it! Stop it! Oh, Dick, I'll tell you, I'm too old to do this. These guys here, I'm telling you, this is hard. That's the way to go, fellas! <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> huh? You rolling, Hank? Don't roll anything. <laughs> what no. is going on here? I didn't know this was this. What do you mean? I just called you up and said this is uh, going to be just our show. You're going to be hosting the show. You didn't what know that? Show? <laughs> <laughs> See, I thought that you'd feel at home. This is just like game day. You know, we got NFL like films right in your me. face. You know, you make you feel like home. I've seen that guy. Oh, I know. You look good. I feel good. Recording us today. Yeah, fellas, how about excusing us for a while, okay? Please. Wait a minute now, wait a minute. You mind if I just talk to my friend here? You guys got a huge drop on everything. Are you gonna let us stay here or are you gonna throw us out? I'm gonna, well, what are we what are we doing today here? Well, I supposed to be ten minutes, you told me. Ten minutes? Yeah, ten minutes. No, I thought it was two hours. You... Alright, what are we doing here? You well, the, you know, the feet... you know, this is a place of business. I know. I mean, it is it Let's is a place outside. sorry, because I don't we don't want to disturb everyone here. Good. These guys gonna are going with us? Well, what the hell? They're the camera people. Of course they're gonna go with us. What are we gonna shoot this? Silent? You didn't know I was gonna have this on film, did you? Hey, this is on the record now, man. Uh, one thing goes wrong, you're in court. <laughs> well, I love NFL films. I always treat the crew very nicely. I'm very cordial. I allow them access to any area that they want in. And, uh, you know, in fact, they can come right in my huddle if they want. You know, there's, there's, we have no problems with NFL films. Now, earlier we were kidding around a bit with about our cameramen. Is that what you call those guys? Yeah, these guys here are camera. You know, the guys that you treat with such respect during the course of a season, you know, that hasn't changed. You still accord us the same respect. The respect that I give them is commensurate with their uh, abrasiveness in interfering with my coaching operation. Now, now, now these, now, the, uh, Hank, Hank, how many times has Coach Parcells thrown you off the field? At least a dozen. That's a good, shut up, all of them. Oh, we them. Get them cameras out of here. Get that microphone out of here. Now, do you remember doing that? I don't remember any of them. so much about control but about getting the the resources in place but now to allow control, you to succeed. Though, is important to you I mean it is I mean even when we did this well, interview you had to know the names of the guys here you wanted to know the name of our crew you had to know how many people were gonna be here so come on that's a control is is important to you being informed doesn't necessarily mean that uh, I mean, I didn't tell you where to stand up uh, set up these cameras here to do this interview I didn't tell you to what location what, do you think, to you choose? Think we're in a bad location here. You well, want us to change? I, I probably I would have changed the location yeah, myself. Really? You know, yeah. but you have the expertise. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you fail on your own. <laughs> Before I became the head coach of the Giants, I coached the linebackers, and some of the things that I tried to stress was stress with. Uh, God. Some of the things that I tried to stress. St golly. I always emphasize that. Oh, I got to start this over. It's okay. The Giants matured and grew 
through learning from a very, very difficult set of circumstances that existed in the 82 season. The 82 season, I can't get this right. That was really good, though. I mean, it was, we were on a roll. Yeah, it was coming on pretty good. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Just take your time, regroup, and we're still rolling. Yeah. You're actually getting better. Yeah, I think you are. I mean, that seems to Do you want to trade? <laughs> yeah. I can do that right there, too. If he, if he wants to do that. I think I can do that. Well, I'll take it. I'll stay here. I'll stay here. Uh, you guys need gas money back to Philly? <laughs> After all this film with you, so maybe we do. <laughs> all right. Get out of here, yeah. Kenny. <laughs> what a ham and egg operator. This, 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 this so it's worse. worse. <laughs> Bill, thanks for joining us. And, uh, and, and you are going to wear a mic for us, right? You out of your mind? I'm you mean not you're, you're not going to do it now after oh, all? Oh, deal's off. Case closed. Take those old records off the shelf, and I'll listen to them by myself. Today's music ain't got no soul. I like that old time rock and roll. You got to be able to laugh at yourself a little bit now. If you can't do that in this league, in this game, you got a problem because, you know, I will not allow my players to be too sensitive. So if the coach is too sensitive, then, you know, I can't be too sensitive either. So when they get their shots, they take them. And when I get my shots, I take them. But that's fun. I like that part of it. Oh, you got your pretty haircut too, huh? Looks nice. Look at you. You got stuff on your sleeves. And you got those knee socks on, and you got your little thing hanging off, a little towel. I don't know what you need that for. You got enough. Oh, okay. And don't call me sir. I ain't in the army. Just call me Bill. Get loose in a hurry, will you, fellas? Mm -hmm. Do me a personal favor. A jumbo. I don't want you to get nervous, because that's that's not Michigan State down there. That's Philadelphia. Okay, kid. Not Michigan State. I know if it was, you'd be real nervous. We had a rule. They could say what they wanted to say, but I could say what I wanted to say, too. Very seldom did a player try to cross a line. There is a line. They know where it is. I tell you, he's a stone face, that Barbero now. You know what the hell he's thinking. I'd hate to have to fight that son of a gun. The veterans get a little closer to the line than the young players, obviously. And to get your Shut up, Sims. Now, don't be a damn no-class player. And once in a while, there's just outright disagreements between myself and, and some of the players. Hey, Phil, I'll run the game. I, know, I don't know who you're sending in. I'm sending goal line in, well, Somebody give me something. Okay. I ain't got time to Signal. make a call. Bill, I just raised my hand. Okay. All right. But that was okay. At that time, it was a healthy situation. I'm not saying we can't play. We can't play. We're too stupid. Play, dumb sir. players do dumb things. Dumb, dumb players do dumb things. It's not do this because I say to do it. On a team, it's you behave this way because this gives you the best chance to win. And whether there's a, a little vile language every once in a while or a little um, what can be construed by an outsider as disrespect, and it's really not, I don't think it's unhealthy. You shut up! If you get your feelings hurt, that's too bad. Terry Glenn got a bursitis. My little honey bunch got a little bursitis on her knee back here. That's why I make you wear knee pads, see? <laughs> and I never took any of that personal myself. Now, the, f the first time they went through this, it's, it was hard for them. But once they'd been around for a while, I don't, I don't think they thought anything about it. Come here, I want to tell you something. Come here. Now listen to me. I tell you, you get in a fight and you get thrown out of this game, you're going home for good, okay? Just so you know. They got to know what you think. The worst thing for a player to do is be sitting there and not know what the coach is thinking, not know what the leader on the team is thinking. You see what happens? Because you got no discipline. 
Well, I threw a garbage can over them, some of them, uh, with a bunch of stuff in it, and told them that's where they belong with the rest of this crap, because that's what they were playing like. And so I dumped it on a couple guys, Bert, and, and some of them were in the front row. You know, they got it. So, and then I just threw the bucket off the wall and left. That was it. Oh, Maggie, that looked like you, honey. That looked like you. You see that little son bitch right there? He come up to New England with me, and he, f he fumbles the opening kickoff against Jacksonville. And I just hit him as hard as I can hit him right there on the shoulder pad. I just whack him. You know what his mother says? What'd you do to make Coach Parcell so mad at you? <laughs> <laughs> she sided with me. <laughs> she says, he wouldn't have done that unless you did something did really something, bad. Yeah. <laughs> You're not sick tonight, are you? Good. Your tongue's going to be hanging out. We got a crisis every 15 minutes. Matt Barr's got a little flu. Tell him to throw up on his own time. Okay? You got to tell him we got a game today. Throw up after the game. We all know what goes on in football. We've all, we're all part of it. We know what the game uh, is comprised of. Uh, part of this game, you, you're not going to be feeling too well when you play it. Yeah, he's got the flu, right? Right. I gave him two liters. He's a little lightheaded and so forth. He's all right, but he's not in top form. Huh? He'll be, he'll be able to play, but he's not in top form, that's all. Well, he don't have to play, Doc. All he's got to do is kick. Do you play sometimes when you're not feeling 100%? Bar went in and used the bathroom, he'd be right back. Anyone who's ever played or coached it knows it. The peripheral people don't know it. And, of course, the liberals don't like it. Here's my doctor. You see this guy in the thing? Last time we were down here, I got this Mark Collins. Gets hurt the first quarter. So he's sitting over the bench. I see the doctor's got his arm around him, sitting on the bench room. I walk over to him and say, if I ever see you sitting on the bench with one of my players again, you're fired. I says, this ain't a doctor's office. He's going to think he's in a doctor's office. I said, don't be talking real nice. You talk loud and you stand up over him. It's true. You have to figure out where your team's mentality appears to be when you start and then Put the hammer, if it's not where you want it, put the hammer down quickly and try to get the attention back on the, on the detail very quickly. Come here. Come here. I'm going to teach you how to do this one time. Now listen to me. This is like playing center field in baseball. Center field in baseball. Do you understand? Sprint to it. Sprint to it. Set your feet. Set your feet. Set up. Set your feet. Catch the ball. Catch the ball. Catch it. That's the lesson for the rest of your career. We're going to hear it every day. Sprint to it, get set, catch it. Get back, get back. Set up, set up. Ah, bad. Can't get any worse than that. You can't do it any worse. Set your feet, set your feet. Not, ah. Jerking at the ball. Reaching for the ball. Look at this. Set up, set up, set up. It's not bad. I didn't really like it. All the fumbles that you'll fumble are going to be made for two reasons. One, you're drifting, okay? Or two, you're reaching. You got me? He's drifting, he's drifting, he's drifting. You're reaching for the ball. Set up, Robert. Set up, Robert. Ah, oh, you got nice. You're lucky. You're just lucky. You're just lucky. You want the ball coming down on your head. It's windy around here. It's windy over there at the Meadowlands. The key point of the game, no one really remembers. The wind was blowing 42 miles an hour. The Washington punt returner let the ball hit the ground six times. And Phil McConkey, our punt returner, didn't let it hit the ground at all. And the net difference in that yardage was 112 yards. That's 112 yards of field position that we gain just by catching punts. Don't reach and don't drift. You know, Ward, you're going to puke. I'm going to be back here with you so much. You're going to be throwing up about every five minutes listening to me. Sprint to it, get set, catch it. Don't drift and don't reach. Okay, you got to know that. You got to know. If I an old man knows it, why don't you know it? Huh? Right, 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 right. Going to come to you, see? 
Hey, this is hard. Huh? Megat was worse than you. Megat. Megat. Damn it. You know where you make any mistake? You're not getting to the ball. It's like you got to be like a pass receiver. You got to go with the ball. See? You think you got all the damn time in the world? You don't have it. This ball's coming. You got to get there and be in position. Like running a curl pattern. You want to run tonight, son, or you want to act like a rabbit? You want to run or you want to duck down? If you want to duck, just go over there and get under the bench and stay there. You want to run or not? Tell me, you want to run or not? Then quit putting the brakes on. You stop five yards before you got to hit. And cut it up in there or I'll get me another punt return. I don't really give it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's what you're going to be doing Sunday when we go to Seattle. You're going to be watching the game in New York on TV. Get up the field. Get up the field. Stop. Hold it. Playing center field in baseball, do you understand? There's a runner on third, OK? We're trying to throw the son of a gun out at the plate. We can't throw him out catching the ball going like this, can we? You don't want to be backing into the end zone catching the kickoff, because they're running their ass off at you. You're going like this. You know how far those cover guys are running while you're doing this? While you're doing this and trying to do this, they're running seven, eight yards. Whereas if you catch the ball on your lean and you start accelerating, you got a little greater separation. You need to be back here like this, catching that kick over that point, so that when you catch it, you're going that way. It might be the difference between breaking one and not breaking it. You're just wasting time. And they're running, OK? These guys come in this league. This ain't like playing Wake Forest now, OK? They're coming. Come on, you need to be a good returner. What can I need to do this? Hard job to be good at it. There's a lot of guys who go back there and just fool around. Yeah, but it's a hard job to be good at it. And I'm one of the best guys coaching in the league on that, OK? I've had them all. I had Megan, I had McConkie. All these guys can return. They were good returners. And I'm, teach I'm teaching you just what I taught them. Huh? It's coming right now. 45, 50, 45. That a boy, Dietrich. Come on, kid. Get it up the field! <laughs> stupid. You can't do it when you slip. Stupid. I'm starting to think you're stupid. Hold on, keep him out. We're gonna get this son, we're gonna do it right. Come on, get your ass back up there. You're drifting and you're reaching and you're fumbling. Come on. Set up, set up. Good, score. There you go. 45, the 45, That looks like a punt returner there. Mr. Official, Mr. Official. You check that 91 on defense's jersey, okay? You're gonna find a lot of silicone on it. On defense, uh, hey, not our team, their team, okay? 91, just look at it. I'm going to tell you now, they're tackling our guys on pass protection. Talk to that damn umpire. Less tackle, the less tackle. You guys better get that offside squared away now. You missed three the first half. And you know, and you know I don't bitch at the officials. Oh, I know that. You're taking the worst coin toss guy you in the league out there. He can't win anything. Even when the other team when is... When they call it, he can't win. He can't win anything. He never has been able to. That's one of the reasons he won't go to Canton. He couldn't win no coin toss. That Pro Bowl don't count. This coin toss counts a little bit. Give me a number! I need the number! You gotta have the number! That's an error in officiating, because every time you call a penalty, you got to call the guy's number. I've been in the league long enough to know that. It was 22. I'll tell you the number. So you better have it next time. Now, you want to know who it was? You want me to tell you? It was number 22. You better have it next time. Ooh, this is nice and soft. Yeah, it's a good field. No Flattened crown. it out. We yeah. took the crown out, too. I think it'll be okay. What the Bears do today? This field looks a lot better when you have good players playing. Let's go. We're going to go. Yeah. 
That's right, and good officials. I didn't tell them that, though. No, I just talked to him about we had a situation on that measurement last week. We didn't know whether they missed. So I told Phil to request a timeout if he had, you know, if it was close or something. You mean for a measurement? Yeah, a timeout for a measurement. Sure, we'll always give you a Request measurement. a measurement, not a yeah. timeout. I well, know you'll give us one of those. Okay. Unless we're in the official closing seconds of the game, and it's obviously not a first time. Obvious to who? To me. All right. <laughs> Come on, baby. Watch out, ball boys. Get down. Get the hell out of the way. Will you get out of the way, ball boy? Okay. We got a hundred of them. Got more ball boys than we got players. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> what are you doing? I'll tell you one thing, their ball boys throw a lot better than ours do. Man, let me tell you something. Those hats are not the most important thing on earth, all right? Yes, Take it easy, relax. Yes, sir. Have a cigar, okay? Easy. Make it easy. Those hats are not a crisis. You know the team mascot? You know the team mascot? Look at this dunce in this eagle outfit out here. Fargo. You see him, number zero out here? You see him? Look at him. Now, that's what I'm going to do when I quit coaching. I'm going to be one of those dunces. Dolphin Denny or, uh, yeah, that chicken guy or this guy. Oh. Wonder what he gets an hour. It ain't enough, whatever it is. When you were with the Patriots, New England switched mascots to that big-headed Patriot guy that a lot of New England fans say looks like Elvis. Would you agree with that description of him? Does he look like Elvis? Well, I, I, I never had seen Elvis personally. Uh, I don't know who he looks like. I don't care who he looks like. And it's not important to me who he looks like. In fact, mascots in general are not what I would concentrate on. So when you were coaching for the Giants, you were glad that they were one of the few franchises that never has had a mascot? That, those are what you call peripheral issues. I wasn't interested in the peripheral issues. Do you give like a psychological or written test for players when you scout them? Yes. Yeah. Well, what would, would I have to, again, if I was a player and wanted to play for you, what would be things that you would look for in that written exam that would, that would alert? I would give you an example. I would ask Steve Sable, what are the three most important things in his life? And if the answers to those questions, well, maybe your family is one or your religion or whatever it would be. If football wasn't in there somewhere. Wasn't in the top three. If it wasn't in the top three, okay. I, might ha I might have a problem. You know, I, w I want the guy's job and, and his, what he's working at, I want it in there somewhere. Doesn't have to be right at the top of the list, but it needs to be in there somewhere. It's in there with me. I want it in there with the guys that I'm coaching. Have a good one, Kenny. Come on, Bubba. Come on, fellas. Softball season's over. These guys are going to hit back. Billy, make sure you remind them. They might try something big early. Yeah. OK? Last time I told you guys that, you forgot to remember. Remember? Let's go. Now, Joe, if your heart starts fluttering, we'll send you down to county emergency. Get you recycled. It's you know? fluttering. Yeah, I know it is. All right, Ingy, today's your day, honey. You got a big one today. You're going to have a big play today. I can tell. I can smell it. You see that thing up there? You know what that thing is? That's a scoreboard. That's why they got it up there. It says Jets and Giants. You know what I mean? Hey, if they didn't have that son of a gun up there, then it wouldn't mean anything. We could just fool around. Don't worry about doing everything perfect now. Just get out there and run like hell and catch it, all right? All right. You know what I mean? Like a street game. You, you just think too much. You're trying to be too precise. Don't worry about doing it perfect. It ain't going to be perfect. You got to play, man. Just go play. They don't realize what the price is to do, you know, what you have to do to do well. My expectations for players are generally pretty high. I'm fairly demanding as a coach. I'm going to expect them to be in condition. I'm going to expect them to prepare and, and practice hard to, to give their best on Sunday. And the ones that do that are going to stay with the program. And those that aren't willing will be put aside and we'll get some that are. Simple as that. What the f are you doing staying 10 yards in the backfield? Get up on the line. Don't you know how much time's on the clock? You almost cost us a chance, son.
do. Give me regular. regular. Hold on. Regular. And let's go with the 76 wide hook go. Now you go tell them what we're going to do. guys over there asking those questions don't understand what's going on in the body of the person that's receiving the questions. Even though they might tell you they do, they really don't understand. Questions? It can be a highly emotional time for a coach and a highly frustrating time and a time where exasperation and uh, things of that nature can come out. You know, everybody's trying to stir that up around here. You know, who's sitting, who's playing. I don't really give a I've got to tell you the truth. It's, it's unbelievable. You know, that's why sometimes I call you guys commies. That's why. It's that stuff right there. There it is. Sub subversive from within. Even when it's going good. The three or four secretaries that I had before I came here all called and to told Laura, who's my secretary now, don't talk to them on Mondays. Win or lose, it's not a good day. And that's really the truth. It's not a good day. Mondays are not a good day because... Whether you won or you lost, there's always problems. It's either injuries or something didn't go well with the game or there's something wrong with your team. Any improvement on Terry Glenn? Well, he missed again today, so we'll see. She's making progress, yeah, I think. Shouldn't be too much longer. Or you're trying to second guess yourself on several things that happen in the game. So Mondays aren't a good, game, good day. Plus you're physically fatigued. Monday's a very tiring day for me I'm, because I can't sleep on Sunday night. I don't have a crystal ball. I told you what I'm gonna do now. Now you want to what I'm gonna do in, in some contingency event. And then if I tell you that, then you're gonna wanna know what I'm gonna do in another contingency event, all of which are hypothetical now. So I'm not gonna address those questions. I had a guy say something to me not too long ago that hit home with me, and I'd say it, it, this would be very pertinent to, to Bill Parcells and, and the way I, it, what's inside my heart and my mind, and, and I'm not saying it's well-adjusted. I'm not saying anything. I have no mental defense for what happens to me. That's the best way I can explain it. Someone used that term to me, and it just hit me like a... It just hit me right square, in the, and I, as soon as he said it, I said, you know, that's the trouble with you, Parcells. You, I don't have any mental defense for the emotion. We'll see what happens. I don't know how bad it is right Bill, now. Bill, does, does that mean you were annoyed with your defensive coach? I don't mean any thing, okay? You got me? I don't mean anything. Actually, I've talked to people, professional people, about this kind of thing in an effort to get a better grip is the right word, I guess, is the common word now on that. But I have no mental defense for that emotion that exists from post-game Sunday until Tuesday. And I can't explain to you why it happens, but I can't cope with it. You gotta let yourself relax. You gotta, I know that. It's not a secret. But I can't do it. I might have made a mistake by being logical. I do better with the team when I'm illogical. That's the truth. I don't know whether anyone here is capable of understanding that. As I've gotten older, I have a better understanding, a much better understanding of it than I did years ago. I just thought, well, you know, you're cra you're incensed. You're, you know, you're... But I, I just understand now that there are some things that the human 
mind doesn't deal with well. And this is the case with me. I'm not trying to get into some psychological thing here. I'm just telling you, ask me why it's the way it is. I don't know. I can't help it. I'm not happy about being the way I am. Okay? I'm really not. But that's just the way I am. I can't, I'm ha I've had difficulty over the years, and it's probably one of the things that drives me away from the game. I'll tell you, Patrick, I'm getting too old for this. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I ain't going much longer. <clears throat> just between you and me, yeah. this could be it, I promise you. But I'm going to resign my position here. Uh, I spoke with George in Wellington yesterday. I need a respite from that feeling sometimes. They want you to cook the dinner. At least they ought to let you shop for some of the groceries. Okay? I'm not going to coach any more football games. This is definitely the end of my coaching career. I'm just trying to tell you what I think is the situation as I perceive it to be, right, wrong, or indifferent. I'm not trying to sound like some, you know. Anything else, guys? Now they talk about it. Well, it's a meltdown. It's this, and this coach lost it, and he did that, and this. And I, it's, it's, I don't really think that there's anything to that. To ask Bill Parcells to be the new head coach of the Dallas Cowboys was obvious to me. So with no further ado, you know him well. I want to introduce Bill Parcells the new head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. I'd like to uh, thank Jerry for the opportunity to return to the National Football League. Just felt right. I was convinced from having been uh, an opponent of the Cowboys that the ownership was intent on winning. And that was important to me. I just think it's one of the marquee franchises in the league, and that was appealing as well. And they've had tremendous history of success in their franchise. It just, it just hit me the right way. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Don't be afraid to run some of these veteran guys now. They need to start practicing around here. Come on, just come off the line. Don't be prancing now, okay? Don't be a prancer. You know, you're trying to run like you think receivers are supposed to look. Just run like yourself. It's like beating farts out of dead mules on some of these guys. Wear his ass out. He'll either get back to playing or he'll quit. And I doubt he's going to quit, don't you? Got to get it out of your hands. Don't be waiting forever. You're going to get killed. Huh? They'd be licking their chops. You'd be like liverwurst on rye. Huh? A little pepperoni. They said, ooh, we got a little pepperoni back here. We can have for lunch. Ass high, feet close together. Okay. Ass high. Now, here's why. Because if you got your ass high, that makes your chest go down a little bit further. When you backpedal, you can't backpedal as good as if you're down here, you can extend further. See what I'm saying? Come on, we're going to practice this afternoon now, boys. Don't test my patience this afternoon. I can tell. I can already tell. Oh, honey, you're going to be tired of me. Oh, you're going to be tired of me. I told him the first day that I ever met him, get your expectations up. Okay? Because that's where mine are. You'll be all right, honey. You'll be all right. You know why? You know why? Because I ain't going to let you fail. I promise you. I ain't gonna let you fail. You're gonna be fine. We'll block the blitz. I told you we were gonna block the blitz, don't I? Didn't I? Didn't I tell you all we're gonna block it? Are we starting to practice it? We'll practice it every day the rest of the year. We're gonna block the blitz. And get on your front foot and throw and quit worrying about a blitz. I'm gonna tell you something, fellas. A year from now or six months from now, I don't know when, you're gonna pray they blitz. A little pressure coming. With these receivers we got out here, You'll be wishing for it. It's like picking chickens. What? Sit, 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 sit. Strange. 
That's it. Go. Score. 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 That's good running there now. There you go. There you go. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's the way to compete. There you go. These guys can rush if you want to. You guys can rush if you want to. And now, fellas, we're going to keep working here. We got work to do. It's obvious. Any of you could, should see it. No one said it was going to be easy. <laughs> It's like looking for hen's teeth. I don't know why I, I don't get convinced about what I'm seeing. Let's go, Dallas! Let's go! I never am convinced. You know, I'm always thinking that there's better for us. We can whip these guys. We can whip them. Go with the hole. Snap is high. Kick is away. The kick is good. The Cowboys win in overtime. Welcome home, Tuna. We didn't lose, so I'm happy. I'm going to be happy for a little bit. Until I get out of the parking lot. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I was on the road in the playoff game down 17 0 in San Francisco with the great Joe Montana. 21 in the third quarter. Now he can be done. You just got to concentrate. Sellout crowd on hand here at Texas Stadium in a big game for both teams with the playoffs looming ahead. We'll see who wins it today. We're underway. Rod Smart, 10. Smart to about the 18. Uh, fumble. fumble the ball. Football. Bootleg by Carter. Back to pass. Fires into the end zone. And it's caught. Oh, a catch. Touchdown, Dallas. By 6 o'clock tonight, I'll have forgotten all about it. I'll be sitting at my desk looking at the film, trying to figure out how we ever won the game. This could be the put it away touchdown. McNabb rolling. Firing. Complete. Touchdown, LJ Stitt. Three touchdown passes this afternoon of all different stripes and varieties for Donovan McNabb. I realize it's doom and gloom around here today, but I remind all of you, if someone says we're 8-5 and five going into the last three weeks of the season, you guys would have a conga line here before the season starts. <laughs> so, with that, I'll leave you alone. Look where we are now, huh? Different place, a different time, okay? This would be a really big step for you guys, and, and they can be had, you know it, okay? So let's play harder and longer than they do, okay? All right, let's go, boys. Let's go. Come on, you like football? This is it tonight, boys. I want to try to throw a touchdown pass. Three-step drop by Carter. Back now. Rolls right. Throws down the middle. He's got Witten all alone at the four. And Jason Witten walks in for a 36-yard touchdown. And the Cowboys are going back to the playoffs for the first time since 1999 by beating the New York Giants. This was by far the best win that I've had here in Dallas. I just thought our guys were really good today. I'm just proud of them. You can't call them losers anymore. Congratulations. Oh, great on year. what? On a great year. Ah. In Their Own Words is brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. Players that were doing it, I respected. And it was their way of having a little fun. Here comes Harry Carson now. He's looking for the Gatorade. Everybody is staying in his stadium. He's got it. Parcells is up there without the headset, and they get it. Initially, it wasn't. I think anything but an impulsive thought that one of them had, just have a little fun with Bill. You know, you have to have a pretty good feeling about your relationship with a person before you do that to them. You, you know, you're gonna, you, you know, if I just walk up to somebody on the streets and do that, to them, dump something on them, that, there's a pretty good chance that person's gonna be offended. But I think the players were confident enough in, in how I felt that they felt like they could do it and it wouldn't be a, a problem. And it wasn't. It always surprised me. I, I very seldom could anticipate it coming. You get geared into coaching and you're on such a track that you don't anticipate it coming. They had fun with it and it became part of Americana. You know, everywhere I went, the young kids and would ask me about the bucket and, uh, is that cold? And, you know, and 
So it was a lot of fun. I don't have to motivate this team for this game. Are you kidding? This is the Super Bowl. <laughs> if you can't get ready to play this game, you ought to take a hike. The team was determined. More determined than anyone realized. We only had a few plays. We only had a few running plays. I mean, every single team in the, that we played knew what we were going to run. And it didn't make any difference. Just this team imposed its will on everybody else. And it did. And uh, it takes collective toughness to do that. And they had it. They had it. More resilient than anyone realizes. The quest for me in athletics has always been standing in the tunnel, waiting to go out play the Super Bowl. That's what you coach to do. I don't have a lower standard. Second and six, pitch back, Morris back to Sims, Fleet Flicker, man is open. Bobby Johnson way downfield, now they go to McCocky, and he's inside the 10, inside the 5, of the Tater, down to the two-yard line. And the Giants are ready to put the knockout punch on. First and goal from the one-yard line. How it's set, Joe Morris near side to the right, he's going. I'm not nostalgic. I really don't look back much. I, I think I'm a forward-looking person. But when I do think back on it, and not to be sentimental, I see the smiling faces of those players. I can see them like, you know, they, they were back in their 20s and, and what they look like exactly, and, and I'm sure they see mine. That was just the time, you know, we had there together and it was a special time. like the heavyweight belt or the Kentucky Derby. Once you have it, once you have it, they can never take it from you. No matter what, they can never not call you a champion because for that time you were, once you have it, they can never take it 